Hey, Brandon, what's going on? Rob Sestronino, uh, nice to get the chance to talk to you today. You as well. You as well. Thank you for having me. Okay, Brent, I uh, would love to just uh, hear more about what's going on. I thought this was uh, such an exciting episode uh, last night. Uh, unfortunate how it ultimately ended, especially from your perspective, I'm sure. Uh, can yeah. you talk a little bit about your relationship with Danny? Because we got to see when you all got together uh, and had lunch. It seemed like mm -hmm. that you two were really going to be working together post-merge. Was that actually how it played out? out um it it was but it's, it wasn't completely accurate so you know we did have that moment at at lunch together where we kind of you know bonded obviously as everybody saw um but it it was a lot deeper than that the dynamic was a lot different once you know everybody was on the same beach there was this really big you know ratu soka war that was kind of brewing the entire time be before we even all got on the same beach together so we knew, yeah, we can work together, but there was going to come a point in time where this, the line in the sand was going to be drawn. Now, I didn't think it was going to be as early as it was, but we definitely we, we understood the dynamic of the game. We you know we all watch this game. We all know you have to take out certain people at certain times, and you know Danny felt like those was the right time. So that's that's kind of how it played out. So there were ten people going into the vote last night, and we saw that mm. basically everybody was got brought in on the plan of okay that we're going to put the votes on franny was there any conversation about uh maybe we should not tell danny and heidi that we're going to be putting the votes on franny um there there wasn't because we under well let me let me go back a little bit so it kind of all started with matt last week so we actually thought matt had did have the real idol um, when he showed us a fake. We thought there was a possibility that he had the real one. Well, at least personally, I did. We thought there was a possibility he had the real one, but just was smart enough not to show us. Um, so, you know, the first thing he said when we got to the beach was, "Where's my? I don't have my bag." He's like, "Can I? Like, I, you know, am I able to get my bag?" And that was a to me immediately. I'm like, "Oh, he's definitely got it. He's got the idol. He's trying. He's playing." It. So once he went home, we're like, "All right, well, he, Franny might have it, or Danny might have it." So we, we did think it was a possibility one of them had it. So we did convene. Um, we did say at one point that we, oh, at least I thought we said that we were going to split the votes on Danny and Franny. So I didn't think it would really make that big of a difference. In our head, it was like, all right, one of them is probably going to play the idol. It's just a matter of who it is and do we have a plan in case they do. And, you know, we never, one of my biggest issues that I had, I didn't check with anybody before we went to tribal. We were painting the flag. And next thing you know, oh, they're like, it's time to go to tribal. So I'm like, oh, my God. I hope everybody's on the same page. And I very, very quickly found out that we were not on the same page at all. Or people understood what was going on and just didn't want to tell me what was going on because they knew that, you know, they're like, all right, we'll just let them. And by people, I'm talking about uh, Tika. They knew what was going on. They just wanted to kind of stay neutral and just play with the group and let everything else play out the way it played out. So. We, we knew it was a possibility that that, that could happen, and that, that's how it went down. Yeah, Brandon, thank you for all of that, because that really does help with painting, uh, filling in a lot of the missing pieces in terms of uh, trying to you know figure out what's going on out there. In terms of uh, Tika, could you talk a little bit more about uh, where they are in all of this? Like, Did you have any sort of idea that they were also talking to the Soka people? So I'm... I did think that Carolyn was. Um, I thought that Carson was was pretty rat too strong. Um, Jam Jam, he was kind of he was our wild card. We didn't really know what to expect. We thought that we might have some sort of allegiance with him just because of how the last vote went went down. And actually, at one point, he does come up to me on the beach and tell me that you know Danny's throwing my name out there. Now he didn't tell me that he had the idol. He didn't tell me he was going to play it, but he did say that Danny had brought my name up as a possible like possibility. So. I thought that for this vote, at least, that they were aligned with us. And I think that they voted that way to, to you know, keep that facade up. But I definitely didn't realize how, you know, tied into Tika. That, uh, I can't even say they were tied into Soka, but just how much of in the middle they were playing it and just letting us, you know, being right to and Soka duke it out. Of the three Soka people, why was Franny the target? So Franny was the target for one because, like I said, I thought that she might have had the, the idol. Two, she's just, she's killing all of these challenges. Um, she's a very physical threat, and and people like her. So to us, it was like this is our opportunity because she didn't win immunity. That we we should take a shot at her. We should try to get her out right now. And I think that that's kind of what everybody was you know going along with, uh, whether they knew the plan or not. They you know she was just a huge threat out there to be honest. Okay, 
you had such an interesting conversation last week with Matt back on during the tribe switch. And you talked to him about how, uh, you know, uh, Matt felt like he was screwed. Of course, you said, like, I, I feel like, you know, that's there's always a way out. After your experience last night, do you still feel the same way you did back on the beach? Yeah, I mean, you know, going back to that statement, I mean, it's funny. I did not think that they were going to get that much attention. I, we were just out there talking. You know, that's that's the outlook I have on everything. There's a way out of everything. You know, that's just the outlook I have on life. Now, obviously, the best player, no matter what it is, whether it's football, whether it's Survivor, what, the best player doesn't always win. That's just not how the cards always fall. My point in what I was saying was that in a game like Survivor, if you're there, there's always a path to the end. Whether you know exactly what that is or not, I feel like there's always a way. If you can just make it through that next vote or make it to the next day, the dynamics change so rapidly. Now, obviously, there's going to be outliers. There's always a situation where you can get screwed. And, you know, not saying I think yeah. Matt, he did get screwed kind of by how the cards felt. I'm not going to sit here and try to deny that at all. My point was, I think that if you're able to get through those situations, then, you know, everything changes okay so just going back to matt and his particular situation was there an out for matt that something was there something he could have said or done that would have unlocked uh, the uh, ability for so for ratu to work with him on that vote and vote out jam jam so i actually did want to work with matt that was initially my plan i did want to work with matt what ended up happening was once we got to the beach he just started lying about things that I knew was a lie. Like he started telling me that he was one of the people. I think he said he voted for Kane or something like that. When I knew that, I knew I knew everybody in that last vote who had voted for Kane. I knew what was going on. So it was like you're lying to me about things that you know that I know. And then so on top of that, I thought he had the idol. So it was like with him not having. I think honestly, if he would have had his bag, it would have been a whole different story because we probably wouldn't. We would have just took the safe bet, played it on Jam Jam, and called it a day. But the fact he didn't have it. We're like, all right. And the, the fact he was so adamant about getting it, we're like, there's no, nobody's that adamant about a shot in the dark. You know what I mean? We're like, he definitely has an idol. Mm -hmm. So it's funny. We actually, <laughs> we actually go back. We, we tried to get his bag, but it was, it was already gone. Cause we wanted to actually look and see if he had it or not, but you know, oh, it got it, removed. It, it, yeah. It got removed. Disappeared. Game, so interesting. Yeah, it, it, exactly. So it, it was, um, I think that if he would have just been completely straight up with me, especially knowing that we had already talked previously about working together. I think I would have, I would have been the voice to try to speak up and save him. Um, but yeah, he was just lying to me about stuff that I knew he was lying about. So I just felt in that moment, I can't trust you. You don't have your bag and you might have an idol. So it's your time. Brandon, can you talk about your relationship with Kane? Because it seemed very interesting. Obviously, you know, he voted for you back at that first tribal council. And mm -hmm. at the merge, you know, you talked about how you still don't trust him. But it did seem like that you two were working like pretty closely together by the time we got to this vote last night. Yeah, so me and Kane's relationship was like a roller coaster. I mean, obviously, we started off on a super low point, in my opinion. Um, he was the yeah. only person who was left that voted for me. Um, so I always had in the back of my head, I'm like, he's going to come for me again. He's going to, I don't know when it's going to be, but he's going to come for me again. So I was always very hesitant until we started to kind of get into the, the, you know, this stage of the game that we're at now where, you know, we had a conversation where we're like, look, we're better for each other than we are against each other. We understand how everything's playing out. We have to work together. And we actually had a moment in the challenge where we said the same thing. We're like, yo, we're, let's stick this out. We can do this together. Let's not go to like be at odds with each other. So I think we were coming into the best point in the game with each other that we had the, the entire game. Um, it just, you know, kind of played out how it played out. Now, do I think that there was going to come a time where we were going to shoot it out? Absolutely. Because it was, that was inevitable. In my opinion, that was inevitable. Um, but it just wasn't the time for that. It, it, at that time, we were best for each other's game. Can you tell us where Jamie was in all of this? Because it did seem like in the episodes that she was like getting closer to some of the Soka people. But then after last week's episode, it seemed like that she really folded in back with Ratu. Yeah. So Jamie, it's funny because even when we were out there, Jamie was a big question mark to us. We didn't know, you know, how her alliance was with us. If she did kind of switch over to them uh, being Soka. When I first realized that Jamie was still right too strong was when I realized she didn't tell Soka that we opened the birdcage. Um, and I think they, they realized that pretty quickly as well. But you know, at that point, I was like, all right, we got to ride together. 
the fact that you're trying to keep our secrets shows me that you still have allegiance to us. And I mean, that was all we could ask for. Was, you know, it there was it was very clearly a Ratu versus Soka war. And so in our eyes, it was like, we'd much rather have our Ratu than have you be over there with Soka. So it kind of played out how we wanted it to in a way. Yeah, we saw in the episode where uh, Matthew told Carson before he left, okay, that, hey, I think that Jamie has an idol when you were out there during the game did did you know that or think that jamie had another idol from ratu didn't have a clue i had no idea that jamie's idol was even a thing um because me and like i said me and jamie we were close only because of ratu we didn't really connect personally that much like i mean we talked a lot every everybody talks out there but from a game perspective we didn't really do that much talking and she really did keep a pretty good job of kind of keeping that a secret. Um, so I didn't have a clue that she had an idol, and I definitely didn't know that it was a fake idol. Brandon, how did Matthew's departure from the game change things? <laughs> Matthew's, Matthew's departure from the game changed a lot because he let out a lot of information to a lot of different people. So we were, you know, we're trying to hold up this facade as, as you know, yeah, the birdcage wasn't open, you know, this was this way, this was that way. But the whole time he's blowing up everybody's game because he already told everybody what actually happened. So it it affected it in, in more ways than I can, you know, speak on. But it was, yeah, he he definitely affected the way the game plays out. How close were you and Lauren during your time in the game? Me and Lauren were very close. We actually became close right after that first tribal. Uh, or before that first tribal, I should say. So I did know going into tribal, she had an extra vote. Um, I didn't know that she was that she knew that they were going to be voting for me, but she told me before we left that she wasn't going to vote for me. Um, so when I saw kind of how it played out, I understood why she did it, how she did it, because I knew she had to obviously play her no vote. Um, and in her eyes, it was like, look, I want to work with you, but if you're not going to be here, I'm not going to blow up my own game, which I completely understand. Um, but that was kind of the the beginning of our relationship. And then from there on out, we just were just like, all right, let's just let's ride together. And we were kind of trying to work with each other as closely as we could. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we, we got close pretty early on. If you had a chance to go back to the first couple of days of the game, is there anything that you would have done differently with finding the key to the birdcage? Yeah, so it's funny, like, because of the way it played out, I wouldn't have done anything differently. The one difference I would have made was I would have had underwear on. Um, I actually went to, it oh. sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. So I went, when I found the idol, I actually tried to tuck it in my underwear, but they were wet and hanging up on the clothesline. So I didn't have any on. So it almost fell through my shorts. That's when I actually, when you see the, it looks like it's balled up in my pocket. Yeah. It was actually under my shorts. I just grabbed it. So it didn't fall on the ground. And I knew that Maddie had saw that. And I knew at that point I couldn't trust Maddie. So I was like, cats out the bag. I'm like, either I do one of two things. Either I try to ride with her and we kind of see how it plays out. Or, in the, and basically I'm under her thumb, or I just tell everybody about it. And I was like, I'd much rather tell everybody about it than her be able to hold that over my head and have that ammo against me. Where if she wanted to, she could very easily blow up my game very quickly. Yeah. Uh, the baby boy, Bryce Isaiah, has uh, been on short watch uh, with you uh, all throughout the season. Uh, and notice yeah. that you're really rolling up these shorts in the challenges. Is that, is that a, a fashion statement, or is that for function? I would say it's more for function. It's funny because I like I do go on Twitter. I, I like to you know read what people are saying, and now I keep saying, "Oh, he's got the diaper on and this that the other." It's like, for one, I didn't realize how it looked. There was no mirrors out there, so I didn't know it was like a diaper. To me, I was like, "All right, we're about to be in mud. I'm not trying to get these white shorts any more dirty than they already mm -hmm. have been. So let me roll them up so I can at least have the thighs out a little bit and maybe move a little bit better." It it was supposed to be for function, but it ended up being a fashion statement, I guess. Which <laughs> It is. It is what it is. Could be the new <laughs> summer trend. We'll see. All right, hey. And then uh, last thing that is, is there anything else that you could uh, tell us about your experience in the game that would help us get like a clearer picture of what's going on out there? Um, I'm trying to, I want to make sure I don't, you know, ruin anything with, with this. Please, uh, um, please don't. There. I'll say the one thing, one one kind of conversation that to me was kind of critical um, was when Jam, so Jam Jam actually does come up to me and tell me that, you know, Danny's possibly trying to put a vote on me. Oh, He doesn't tell me that, he doesn't tell me he's going to play his idol and he doesn't tell me that he has the idol. 
because I don't think he actually knew at that point, but he did tell me that, you know, Danny had thrown my name out there. Um, so the way that the Tikas are aligning themselves, they're doing a really good job of playing the middle. Like, mm -hmm. especially like they kind of, they voted the way they did because they knew that they didn't have to put themselves out there. So they're still trying to keep all those alliances intact. They're still trying to kind of fly under the radar, which they, they're doing a really good job of doing because I had no idea how intertwined that they all were. But I think that'll be a, that's, that, that's an interesting part of it. Yeah, Brandon, thank you for all the great info. Uh, this was really fun to get to talk to you and uh, all the best outside Survivor, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, take care, buddy. Bye. You have a good one.